Let's go back. Number two. We, we just went through number one. Number two is view. Let's click on that. And let's jump to Steve's question. And we'll go to the third thing here, the median line. And what Steve said is, isn't it good to have a line down the middle? I think it's helpful. This is one of the options in view that I would recommend using. Um, and just by clicking on that, you can see that we have a, uh, a, a white line down the middle of the, uh, of the I step test. Um, where do you think that might be helpful? Really to see if the patient is standing too far to the left or the right, also with center of gravity, which is a feature that we can turn on later and show you what that is. Um, okay, also in view, we're gonna access the menu, click on view, color code. Click on color code, and what this does is this, this is a tool that you can pop up after you do a test to see what the, what the 15 colors are in the, the spectrum here, and you know, this can be helpful as well. So this is something that can be turned on and off <clears throat> pretty quickly. The next is foot types. Number two is foot types. What foot types do is it shows you a typical low arch foot, a typical medium arch foot, and a typical high arch foot. Now the other buttons within this field are definitions. So this is a low arch definition, what typically a low arch foot would be like, that it's over pronating. And there's definitions for medium and high arch. Now which one of the three does my foot look most like? Low, medium, or high? High. high. Medium. medium. It's actually medium. I'm, I'm close, you know, we're kind of in between, but I'll pull up a high. Yeah, here's the high arch. So you can see in the high arch foot, it's typically not as filled in over here. Medium arch is a little closer to what mine is. Anybody here have low arch or high arch feet that we can use? Glenn, you have high arch? Joe, you have low arch. Anybody else? Low arch. Roberta, low arch. you have a low arch. Joe, why don't you come over and uh, and let's let's show everybody a low arch. And Glenn, your, yours is high. We'll get yours on there too. So this way we can show. We ha now we have this in the software, but I want to show you what a t on the big screen typically what a low arch foot would look like. And later on in the training, we're going to get into how the machine determines what's low, medium, and high. Okay. All right, Joe, hop on. Thank you. And you can see Joe has an, ex by looking at this, Joe has an extremely low arch foot. So he's an excellent example of really one extreme. His arch is just about completely collapsed. And, you know, low arch feet is probably 20% of the population out there. You see anywhere from 20 to 30. Uh, Joe's is more low than most. Thank you, Joe. But you can see the arch area is completely filled in. Glenn, would you mind coming up? Thanks. Let's take a look at what a higher arch foot would typically look like so you don't just see my medium arches all day. Up on. Thanks. OK. Glenn's is, is really in between medium and high but definitely a higher arch foot than mine. Now we think that in a perfect world there'd be five foot types, that it would be flat, low, medium, raised, and high. Uh, because it's kind of like steak, where you have medium, rare, and well, but they invented medium, rare, and they invented medium, well, just to give you a broader spectrum of options. That's really, I, again, ideally there's so many different foot types where Glenn's is really in between medium and high Joe's was flat, mine was medium, but re the, right now the way the world works is people get classified into three, low, medium, or high. And, uh, and Glenn, even though Glenn's was higher than mine, his is more of a medium to high arch foot. Uh, Joe's was flat, but you can see the different foot types by just seeing a three different people in the room, just how varying arch types can be. And the key part of this is that somebody like Joe his feet aren't going to feel good in the same shoes that are going to be comfortable for Glenn. They have very different needs. Which foot is more flexible typically, lower or high? 
low, low. A low arch foot is most people with low arch feet, they have an arch when they're not weight bearing and their feet are very flexible. So when they stand up, their arch collapses. And what do they do when they walk? What's that called? Gait. Well, gait is walk, but what? It's over pronating, over pronating. So people with flat feet are, are more susceptible to uh, issues like plantar fasciitis. And, uh, and there, there's a whole group of foot problems that can develop by having uh, more flexible low arch feet. Now, it doesn't mean that if you have flat feet, your feet will necessarily hurt. It just means that you have different needs than somebody with a high arch foot. So, Joe, you, you really need shoes with stronger counters. You need more support. And we have to do what we can to keep you from pronating. A higher arch foot is more of a rigid pes cavus foot. And a more extreme high arch foot, you would see really no pressure in the arch area. And that foot, where do, where do they put between the heel, the, the midfoot, and the forefoot, the, the ball of foot? Where do they put most of their pressure when they walk? The heel, the heel and the heel. ball. Because a higher arch foot, the midfoot isn't really there to do its job. So where are those types of people more susceptible to, uh, to pain and pressure? The heel and the ball. So a high arch foot really needs to be accommodated. They need, they need more cushioning. A low arch foot typically needs more support and control. And they have very different footwear needs. And these are good examples of why we created iStep. Okay, so why did we put in number two, view, uh, uh, view foot types? Why did we put this in? Really to help customers educate their consumers. You're, you're going to find that a lot of people come into their st uh, the store and they believe that they have low arch feet, maybe they have medium. In some cases, somebody might say, I have low arch feet, and they could even be high arch feet. So, this is really to help educate a consumer and to show somebody what typically a lower arch foot would look like, what a higher arch foot would look like, and that's really to help, help get them in, uh, it, it, into the right footwear for their, for their particular feet. Okay, any questions on foot types? Okay, so we already covered this one, the median line that drew the line, and you can see the center of gravity is right here. This little X in the, in the middle of the test is my center of gravity. That's exactly where the midpoint is in terms of pressure. So this doesn't, just because it's on the right-hand side doesn't necessarily mean that I put more pressure on the right. This was actually Glenn's test, not mine. But if Glenn, you need the median line too, because you can see that Glenn was standing a little bit more to the right when he did his test. So uh, this is helpful, especially for extreme cases. Back to view, arch line. This arch line right here, what it does is it connects the ball, the foot to the heel. And we're gonna bring this up later to show you how the machine thinks and how does the machine determine whether or not this is a low, medium, or high arch foot. So uh, we'll keep the arch line up for now, and it'll make a lot more sense later in the presentation. OK. Analysis mode. Analysis mode is typically used for customer support. When somebody has an iStep question and they call Joe's team, our, uh, Joe runs our iStep department here at Atrex, They'll typically ask somebody to access the analysis mode, and this will bring up statistics that'll help them to see what's going on with their machine. Um, basically, what it does is it gives the exact amount of millimeters for the left measurement and the right measurement in terms of length and width. Uh, it also there's, it shows size adjustments and arch depth as well. All of these will be covered in the configuration part of this training session. Okay, I'm going to turn that one off. Numeric data. Now, in this section on the iStep screen, there are three different options. One is iMatch, what we have here. And as, as you'll see later, iMatch is an area where you can click on a button and have products that match up to your feet that are perfect for you. So I, iMatch will cover later on in the training. But I'm going to show you the other two options that can be there. First, I need to quickly turn off iMatch. So we're going to exit this, and we'll redo a test. Now, you'll notice that 
My pants are a little bit rolled up for this test. That's because the infrared technology is so sensitive that if the pants are low, it will pick up the pants and think that that's part of your feet. So the machine doesn't know what's pants and what's foot. So you need to, if, if your pants are down towards the bottom of your feet, you need to roll them up a little for a more accurate test. Okay, so remember we were in view and we clicked on numeric data. And the numeric data pops up four different fields. The first one is the average kilograms per sensor for the left and right foot. And you can see I put a little bit more on average, a little bit more pressure on my left foot. My left foot's bigger, I'm left-handed, so it really makes sense for in, in my case. Although I do know people that have the opposite where they might be right-handed and have a bigger uh, right foot and, and put more pressure on the left. But typically if the foot's a little bit bigger, if, if you have a, uh, you know, a dominant hand or foot uh, for sports, you're going to also put a little bit more pressure on there. Upper max. So uh, what sensor, they, this takes the sensor that has the, the max pressure, which on the right foot would be this one, the only red one. On the left would probably be one of the orange ones here. And it gives a numeric value to that for the left and right. The lower max, and as you can see, my lower max is higher. Now would that make sense based on the color that you see on, my, on the image there? Where would, where would you think there's, there's more severe pressure on this foot, the rear foot or the... Uh, the forefoot. The heel. The heel, the heel, sure. Makes a lot of sense. So the lower max is 30. The average is only 0.12. Lower max is 0 0.30. Upper max is 0.2. So I'm putting a little more pressure on my rear foot. Um, overall, that is the most common, but you'll see, I, I'm sure some of your tests up there have a lot more red in the forefoot than I typically do. And then the area um, as well, the amount of sensors that are activated uh, for this test. Now the other, the other option is if I unclick numeric data, the color code pops up. So typically most people use this one or the iMatch. I would say iMatch is the most common. Second is this color chart so that a consumer or the person in the store can see the different range of colors and it just helps educate the consumer. Bruce, you had a question. Now, did the numeric data have to be on before the scan, or can you get the numeric data after the scan is done? You know what? Let's find out. I'm not sure. So let's stand on the test. We'll do another test, and then we'll switch it to see. I mean, I know for sure that if you switch it before the test, it'll pop up, but it's a good question. So let's see, uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so obviously you'll need to change, you'll need to go in and change it to numeric data. Oh, nope, it worked. Okay, so it automatically will do it. I'm not sure if that's the case if I matches up there as the default, but, uh, but yeah, so. you, can, uh, you can clearly change it pretty quickly this way. Good question. Okay, so we, we're just wrapping up the view section. Any questions on, on view? before we go to configuration. Okay, all right. 